Father, let us show everybody our, our, our rosaries. Sword. Exactly, our swords. Okay. So, sister, against I, the evil one. That's right. We're I ready do, for battle. I do a lot of work in Alaska. And so, I don't know if you know about Alaska. Some people, I hope they don't get too scared about this, but in Alaska, there's a big gun culture. And oh. so, I, I, in Alaska, I talked to you about my open carry here, and then I talked about my concealed carry in here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, exactly. You got it too. So, in San Francisco, I can't say that though. So, I talked about okay. sword and dagger. People often wonder who we are. Why do we dress this way? What do we do all day? Why do we live this kind of life? What does it mean to be a sister, a priest, a Catholic? We want to help you navigate life through faith to find the truth of God and all His glory, because the truth shall set you free. Welcome back to our podcast, and the truth shall set you free on religious vocations. And actually, you would have to include in there on married vocations, on single vocations, on consecrated virginity, and we could go on and on and on, but mainly on religious vocations. And today, I know you're used to seeing a lot of sisters, but we have a very dear friend, not only of mine, who, which he truly, truly, truly is, because I was the first one to get to meet him, but also of my community. Father James Moore, OP Dominican, notice the habit. I'm sure you've already noticed that, which we absolutely love. Father, welcome to our podcast and the truth shall set you free. Thank you, Sister Joseph Andrew, always a pleasure. <laughs> it is always a pleasure. When we get together, right. we cook up all kinds of things. But in any case, Father, so for this particular podcast, would you tell us a little bit about your life and where you were born and where you come from and how you were raised? And... Sure, absolutely, Sister. You know, I'm a Californian and people have stereotypes of Californians, but I'm from a very different part of California. You truly are. I'm from a part of California I often say is the real part. Oh, wow. It's because like where that. we still do stuff. We're farmers. My family are farmers. Oh, and I love that. I've been there since the 1840s on my dad's side. My dad, a convert. Oh. And then eight, uh, since the 1900s on my mom's side, the early 1900s. Your dad is a convert. Yes, he was a convert. That's right. And so uh, my father, deceased now, uh, and I think praying for us, actually, Amen. today. Amen. Uh, I man. think of him a lot and pray to him. And Amen. Amen. He answers prayers. He does. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes. So born in the California San Joaquin Valley, uh, named after St. Joachim, the yeah. father of our blessed mother. And uh, grown up there, a um, Catholic mother and an Episcopalian father. But an Episcopalian father who really believed. I mean, he would really wow. believe in the sacraments. Even as an Episcopalian, he believed in our Blessed Mother's intercession. Wow. And he had a Marian spirituality already then. And an idea about how she That's... interceded for us. See, he probably thought and prayed, and you can't take Mary out of the picture oh, of the amen. incarnation. Amen. amen. Um, you know, sister, um, I don't know if you know this. He taught Spanish. He taught Spanish and Latin. Um, so he had gone to Mexico City in the early 60s, before the Second Vatican Council, and he, as an Episcopalian, but he went to the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, the oh. old shrine. Oh, the old the shrine. The old basilica, and he remembers the, the old traditional Latin Mass being celebrated there, and he was in, uh, a college student at the time, and just loving oh. our Blessed Mother. And he, right before he died, he and I actually went back there together. And I remember as we were oh. leaving, we climbed up the top of Tepeyac, and we're coming down, and I said, Dad, what's it like coming now here as a Catholic? And he said, well, son, it's beautiful, but I've always loved Mary. I've oh, always loved her. This is going to make me cry, here, so. Father. What a way to begin our yeah, podcast it, in tears. Amen, amen. <laughs> so, Sister, I was brought up in the midst of this family. Um, my mom, making sure that we always went to Mass, uh, she would go to Mass every day if possible. Oh, and, isn't that And then my dad fun? would kneel at my bedside at night and taught me my Catholic prayers, even oh, being my Episcopalian, gosh. and then how to talk to God. So we do that every oh. day. So just, And it was kind of normal. I mean, they weren't. They were both school teachers in town. Oh. Uh, they both, you know, love God. They loved this kind of sacramental outlook on the world, and it was a part of our thing. And also music. They're both musicians, oh. and so uh, both mom and dad singers, and mm -hmm. they both played instruments. Mm -hmm. And my wider family on both sides does music, whether it be popular music or uh, sacred music or whatever it might be. And they, and they love music. And that certainly is one of your gifts, Father. And we will get to that. Amen. You know. Amen. So did you go to Catholic schools? So did sister, you... uh, uh, my part of California is so rural, there are no Catholic schools. Oh. It's just uh, it's just public schools that all you have. But it wasn't a problem because, again, when you're from a small town and the local school board ran things, and so we, we, we <laughs> prayed all the time in school. In fact, I led the prayer oh, at my high Father, school graduation. Let's pray to return to that. Amen. And, and it was not a big deal. Everybody knew that and always God bless you. And 
Um, I'm the only priest ever to come out of um, my home parish and uh, 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 my hometown. So, but yeah, we always prayed together and it was great. So growing up there, uh, didn't go to Catholic school, went to public school all the way through and then uh, started Catholic school or at least Catholic yeah, Catholic school, but uh, with college at Santa Clara University. Okay. So run by the Jesuits. <laughs> Nonetheless, it was funny because my parents had taught me to think. And so when I first wow. got to Santa Clara, I encountered uh, challenges to the faith mm -hmm. coming from Catholics. And it was things like about the liturgy, about music, and mm -hmm. what did Vatican II say? And so I actually started reading these documents, studying. Wow, how God worked providentially in your life. Dominican ways, right? Yes, yes. But also um, that year for Lent, my freshman year, I decided instead of giving up something, I would do something extra. So oh. I started going to daily mass. Oh. And that changed everything. Because wow. we start, I tell people when they're trying to discern something, go to mass every day. Did everybody hear that? When you're trying to discern something, go to mass every day, there's, Father there's, said. There's and no I substitute. agree with you, Father. And there's absolutely no There's substitute. never going to be a substitute for holy mass. I mean, you hear the word of God preached in the context of the liturgy for the whole church. And then you receive our Lord body, blood, soul, and divinity. There's no better way you can discern. <laughs> exactly. And if you're called to be a priest... For goodness sakes, exactly. you need to offer, as a priest, or a religious offer, sister. Yes, but as a priest, you need to offer the whole yeah. sacrifice every day. Yeah. Period. Stop. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's no, should be never an exception to that. Mm -hmm. So what, anyway. What were you studying? So studying music. Oh, okay. uh, and I was studying music to uh, be a church musician. But it was that oh. starting going to mass when I was 18 or 19. And this vocation that I thought about as a kid, but didn't really think very clearly, uh, uh -huh. so started to come back and mm -hmm. came back very strongly. Hmm. Now, at this time, I also encountered our Dominican fathers up at St. Dominic's Church in San Francisco. Oh, okay. So okay. I was going up there to help in a beautiful music program, great choir, oh. very attracted to this, and a beautiful building. Our parish uh -huh. is still there. Uh -huh. It is today, beautiful. Actually. That's where I was ordained a priest. You were there. Yes, yes, yes. It is very beautiful. So I did this uh, four years of music study, and by the end of my time at St. Dominic's, I was pretty, or sorry, Santa Clara, my four years at Santa Clara, pretty sure, it was 1998, that God was calling me to be a priest and to be a Dominican. Okay. But I needed some things to be worked out. And, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. My mom said to me, you should go to grad school. You mm. shouldn't You shouldn't go directly into, so I, to You agreed her, with her? Well, to humor her, I kind of took out some <laughs> applications and uh, I got in at Notre Dame. That's pretty good. Uh, for master's That's degree. That's pretty good. And um, I got, went there to audition, and I really fell in love with the place. I mean, it uh -huh. was this great university with a lot of great Catholic students yes, there. Yes, true. And I mean, and the music and the liturgy were beautiful at the Basilica there yes. on campus. So I and came, the Eucharist all over that Eucharist campus. Eucharist everywhere. 50 um, plus numbers of times. That's right. That's yes. right. And so daily mass still continuing there and being part of the choir and now becoming one of the organists at the Basilica. So that was one of my main jobs to pay, pay for everything. And so I was there uh, <laughs> playing daily mass one day and I looked down from the choir loft and I saw a Dominican habit down there. Ah. And I you knew who that was. It was you. Ah. <laughs> this is 1998 and you showed up with your first group of postulants. I think That's it was right. the very first group of That's postulants. Right. Mm -hmm. Y'all had just been founded. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I remember that. And then uh, we had mass and I saw this habit, but then... We had adoration right afterwards, and you'd gone to adoration. Uh -huh. And I came back because I had to play benediction at the end of adoration, and somehow you'd gotten back there. I uh -huh. thought, oh, there's that Dominican again. Oh, I want to <laughs> talk to her. So I remember uh, we finished benediction, and I, I saw you outside of the basilica, and I said, are you a Dominican? You said, oh, of course. I, I'm not going to imitate your accent. Sorry, sister. But <laughs> of course. And then you started asking me, and I said, you. By I'm all means. Be, I think about becoming a Dominican. What you know? And so, will you please pray for me? And you said, "Oh, of course." Now, are you consecrated to Mary? You asked me. <laughs> I had no idea what that was. I said, "Sister, isn't that what priests do at Mass? They consecrate the Eucharist." <laughs> I mean, and so, uh, and you said, "No, no, no." The tr true devotion to Mary, St. Louis de Montfort, total consecration to Mary. And I said, "I don't know what that is." And I said, "I love Mary, but it's, it might be a little bit overboard." 
And your reaction was pretty strong. I remember just like, well, how do you expect to be a real Dominican if you're not contrary to everything? <laughs> how do you expect? I mean, we have to wear the rosary. It's Marian spirituality. How do you expect to be a Dominican if you're not? I will pray you. For you have a great memory. Father, let us show everybody our, our, our rosaries. Sword. Exactly, our swords. Okay. So, sister, Against I do, the evil one. That's right. We're ready a, for battle. I do a lot of work in Alaska. And so I don't know if you know about Alaska. Some people, I hope they don't get too scared about this, but in Alaska, there's a big gun culture. And oh. so I, I, in Alaska, I talked to you about my open carry here, and then I talked about my concealed carry in here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, exactly. You got it, too. So in San Francisco, I can't say that, though. So I talk about okay. sword and dagger. Oh, I love it. Sword and dagger, Perfect right? Fire. Yeah, exactly. And so, so um, I asked you about total consecration to Mary, duh, and yeah, again, duh, and I thought <laughs> this sister's a little bit kind of intense, and maybe a little bit nuts. Okay, but okay, but okay, but thank you, just pray for me. <laughs> Anyways, I finished up Notre Dame, and it was it was uh, it was a wonderful two years where I really got to know our Blessed Mother more, especially prayed the Rosary more, made great friends. I think you've met some of them. Yes, uh, I did. Made really great friends, I have. but mm -hmm. the calling didn't go away. Uh -huh. So in the year 2000, I knew it was the Jubilee year, yeah. and I had to at least try it. Well, of course, it was a perfect fit, right? Perfect <laughs> fit and fine, for but you. Good Friday, we had preaching on the seven last words, and we got to the word, Eche Mater Tua, Behold Your Mother. Oh. One of the brothers preached on total consecration to Mary. Oh, God bless him, whoever thought, he is. I want to do that. I want to do that. So, <laughs> Did it ring a bell? So I got the book, and, and I, was, I was reading the book, and I was planning on it. And then uh, that summer, we were going around doing vocation events, and I came up to uh, Holy Rosary Parish in Portland. Yes. Yeah. And there I ran into that sister again. Did you? <laughs> and not only that, but you had two sisters with you who were in the Black Veil, and they just got in the Black Veil. They had been postulants. That's at right. Notre Dame. Uh huh. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh no, it's that crazy sister. <laughs> I said, now I'm going to do that exactly what she told me. So I said, I better fess up. <laughs> so I didn't. I just remember your reaction. Oh, man. Father James, Brother James Sunipro, I just knew our Blessed Mother was going to watch out for you. Uh -huh, and that's made the sure consecration. Right. Prayed and prayed and prayed for you. Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. Uh -huh. uh, after I just made my first profession, I made that total consecration, and I never looked back. Yeah. Sister, it's been, it's 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 been really the, the impetus to move forward. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And tell us why it's so important. I could say why it's so important for a woman religious mm -hmm. or for any woman. You tell us for a priest. Right. Or for any man, actually. Well, first of all, sister, I mean, I firmly believe, I don't care if you are a religious priest, if you're a diocesan priest, you need to have a woman in your life. Amen. And that woman is, now, we're married to the church. Yes. That's our bride. Yes. But the icon of the church, yes. theologically, is our Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. So she's an icon of the church. So she literally represents our bride. Now, with you all, it's a little bit easier because you're mm -hmm. married. Christ is your spouse. It's easier. Bride of Christ. Uh -huh. The imagery is pretty clear. Mm -hmm. For us, it gets a little bit more muddled with uh -huh. our brides of the church. Uh -huh. But Mary's an icon of the church. And so it makes that personification of our bride so real and incarnational. And so I, I know you understand this. For people who, who, who sometimes are not priests, they don't understand this, but it's like falling in love. Yes. It's what it feels like. Yes. When I pray the rosary, it's like talking to the woman I love. Mm. When I sing and do music or conduct music uh, in honor of our Blessed Mother, it, it's, 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 like, it's like love songs. Is that so your favorite music? It really is. I Mary mean, and hymns? Well, and one of the sisters told me once, she said, mm. we can't sing it the same way a choir of male religious can. Because for you all, it's like you're True. talking to the girl in your life uh -huh. that you love and that you love with all your heart. Mm -hmm. So We sing it kind of as Mary. And you sing it to Ooh, her with, with the love of, of a I mean, man for his I mean, mother. The rosary and then, of course, the girl that I love right here. There Always, you go. You're never, just loaded. Never, never, never gone. That's absolutely beautiful, Father. Now, Father, something that you had said reminded me of your holy ordination, mm. <laughs> which I was very privileged to be able to fly from Michigan to California. You and Mother Assumpta. Yeah. Mother Assumpta and I to be present. And it reminded me of a couple things, actually. So I'm going to let you tell the story about your mom. But one thing, too, when you said to me, so you had seen me again for the second time, and there was that crazy sister again, and you thought you better fess up. Mm -hmm. That 
After your ordination, I was the very first one who said, I need to see you. I want to be your first penitent. Right. And so it's interesting because, of course, I can't talk about that. I know you can't, but I can say say I went to you. you. I'm not saying what I said. (laughs) I'm only saying I was your very first, and I I was determined that this very intense sister was going to do that. Amen. Amen, sister. Amen. (laughs) So so I tell you, that's, that's one of the most beautiful things about being a priest I always knew that celebrating the Mass, offering the Holy Sacrifice yes. in the Mass would be profound. Yes. But hearing confessions, and I live in San Francisco, so there are people <laughs> that know this. At our parish in San Francisco, we have confessions every Sunday, starting about half an hour before Mass and usually going through the that whole Mass. That is beautiful. With multiple confessions. Thank you for making confession so available to us sinners. It, well, amen. But I'll tell you what happens. Almost every week, there's a major reconciliation to the faith. Wow. So a sinner comes home, and when you get this big fish like St. John Vianney says, I uh-huh. mean, it's just, it's an incredible thing. But to have this all the time, and to be the person standing for Christ. I can't even imagine, Father. It's, 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 it's phenomenal. So, but you're right. I mean, so you have Mary, and you have, and you have the, and also this incredible power that her son has. Mm-hmm. So, yes. But I'm going to pause yes. there just a second, only because I want to really uh, highlight, underline, put glow in the dark, the need for confession, the Amen. sacrament of confession. Amen. It's not the same thing if you just tell God that you're sorry. I hope you do that 24-7. I mean, we're all sinners. I certainly do. I can always think of something I'm sorry for. But that's not saying my sins are forgiven Amen. by the sacrament Amen. by which I have to humble myself and go to a priest who's not going to remember anything. I know you don't remember a thing that I said mm-hmm. on my very first confession to you or any others. But that's not the point. The point is when you say my sins are forgiven, you are speaking with God's voice in you and mine are forgiven. And I walk out knowing they are forgiven and I don't want them accumulating. Amen. So I try to go every single week. Well, likewise. You know, and priests I need maybe to go could too. go every day. But anyway, let's priests not get to too, too intense about this. Priests need to go to confession, so, of course. So, I, mean, so I, I tell this too. You know, I mean, I've got to stand in line like everybody else. One, <laughs> one, one of the most beautiful things that I ever saw was Pope Francis. I don't know if you remember this. was having a penance service at St. Peter's Basilica. And he was about to go to his confessional to hear confessions. And then he stopped at the master service and said, I need to. And he went to one of the confessions. Oh, good. And he good. went to confession Beautiful. in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. In, in the mind of the Pope himself. So I try to go once a week as mm-hmm. well. I mean, and I, I, I can't just absolve myself in the name of the Father. And I, know. I wish I could sometimes. I know. But no. Yeah. Gotta go do it. And it's we have to experience. humble ourselves. And it's so self-revealing mm-hmm. of our pride. Yes. And really that we don't know ourselves the way that we think we do. And we're always asking for more self-knowledge so that we can love more purely God himself. I mean, I just think it's got all those psychological things to it that make us real before God. Amen. And if we want to receive God in communion, we better be very real ourselves. So confession and communion. So well, that's, well, sin darkens the intellect, sister. That's why, you know, you're talking about discernment. So daily reception of the Eucharist, if possible, daily mass, if possible, and confession as often as possible. I mean, as often like, like as I said, possible. Like weekly too. I mean, it's not a problem. But because sin darkens the intellect, and if you want to discern something, the thing that will get in the way of that proper discernment is sin. One exactly. of the main things. I mean, our wounds, other things, uh-huh. scars get in the way, but one of the main things. And so uh-huh. if we're struggling with something, or even if not, I mean, just get rid of all that. Exactly. And clarity of vision. And you feel so different. You're like, whew. Yeah. You know, and I like that. Why would I not do that? And it doesn't matter if you haven't been for 40 years. Get to confession. Amen, there is no reason not to. Right. Okay, so Father, I really wanted to highlight that because I love that sacrament. Amen, and amen. people will say they get nervous, and I'm like, I know myself. I just go in there and say it, and it's rarely too different than anything else that I would say, you know, from the previous confession. Mm-hmm. And that's what's exhausting that I can't cure myself, but God does. Mm-hmm. And every single time, you are a little bit better because you've tried more, and the grace is there. But you know it's gone. Okay, Father. So what else happened at your ordination? Well, and this launches into sort of one of the topics I wanted to talk about. Um, there's a, I'm sorry, yes, the world is binary for, and with, <laughs> without apologies. I'm sorry, but not sorry. The world is binary, right? It's motherhood and fatherhood. And these yes. two things complementary. And yes. as I became a father, which I want to talk about too, because that was also something I didn't understand how that would be so impactful. But you also need mothers to help push men into being good fathers. Excellent. Uh, and, and to help form. So... 
uh, there at my uh, ordination, who was in the front row, but my mother, <laughs> my own mother, and my spiritual mother, you. And, uh, and so I wanted to give two bouquets of flowers out, one at the end of my first Mass, one for the woman in my life, which is the Blessed Mother, and then, of course, the other woman in my life, my own mom. Uh -huh. So I had one bouquet of flowers mm -hmm. to give to my mom. Now, I told you about this beforehand. Right? I said, uh -huh. then I'm going to go and present the flowers to Our Lady, and I'm going to renew my consecration. Uh -huh. And so you said, oh, and you got on there. I got to be there. <laughs> I helped you at the beginning of this. I got to be there. So, of course, I'm not going to turn you down, right, sister? <laughs> of course, sister, we can do this. So I go, and the choir sing a beautiful choral setting in the Ave Maria. <laughs> and I go down, and I give one bouquet to my mother. <laughs> and I'm turning to go to the Lady Chapel there at St. Dominic's Church to make my consecration and renew it. And, uh, and you were there. You'd come out, and you said, oh, Mrs. Moore, did you just come along with me right now? <laughs> What's she doing? So we came over there and we, uh, the three of us knelt down. He said, Mrs. Moore, just read along with us. <laughs> and so my mom read along and re made her consecration. And she said to me after uh, my first Mass, Did Sister Joseph Andrew just trick me into making the total consecration to Mary? I said, Yeah, she kind of did, Mom. She said, Give me the book. I got to see what I just consecrated myself to. So she kind of backed into the consecration that way herself. I know, isn't it beautiful? So your mom, that was a, uh, that was part of what Jesus wanted for your ordination amen, gift too. Amen, amen. And so to see, you know, that that complementarity and the way that we support each other, just you know, I mean, as mothers and fathers do in a biological family, in religious families, we support each other as well. So amen. certainly, all throughout my priesthood, one thing that's amen. been there are the sisters who challenged me to be a better priest. Challenge me to man up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And to be a better mm -hmm. father. And, um, you know, I, we always talk about, you know, of course, a priest is father and blah, blah, blah. When you become a priest, you become a father. I mean, Amen. Like, like, like literally. Amen. I mean, you have to do uh -huh. all kinds of stuff. You've got to stand up for the girl who's going to get punched. Yes. You know, in, in the parking lot. You've got, you've got to be the guy who's like willing to go to bat for people. I mean, yes. you've, got, you've got to take your fatherhood seriously. You've got to be the one who who instructs, you gotta be the one who loves, you gotta be the one who leads people on hikes, you gotta be the one who's, uh, you know, absolving sins, you gotta be the one cleaning up, you know? It's yes, just like any dad. cleaning up like any dad. So, um, and I, we were talking about this, so the Blessed Mother coming into my life, but also during formation, very quietly, just showing up, not in a big dramatic way, like the Blessed Mother, she came in with you and it was Notre Dame, the Golden Dome, all this stuff, <laughs> but just St. Joseph showing up. And St. Joseph showing up and sort of teaching Isn't me along. Isn't that the manly to way amen. to show up? And not, not That's what men do. Yeah, and we women notice. That's right. Well, he did in a big way in my life. and Because you were on to Mary so much. That's you right. You turned so around he, so and he, there, he there he was. Is. Yeah, amen. So explain that. So this year, the you know, especially dedicated to St. Joseph, um, and this increasing Josephology in the church, you know, I like this, that. theologically. Pope Benedict, one of the things he wanted to do, you know, St. Joseph's name was added to the Roman canon of the Mass yes. of the Second Vatican Council. Yes. Then one thing Pope Benedict wanted to do was add his name to all the Eucharistic prayers. Well, Pope Francis fulfilled that uh -huh. and added them he all did. to all God the Eucharistic and, and saw that. But then this year, proclaiming the year of St. Joseph, and in that litany of St. Joseph, where we get all those beautiful titles that are certain about the family, fatherhood, and also spiritual warfare. Yes. The terror of demons. Thank you. Saint I Joseph. pray a prayer just to St. Joseph for that daily. Amen. Amen. Well, so, Amen. So you have this saint who doesn't talk, but is faithful. And what, 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 what did the devil do? He would not serve. Non servium. I will not serve. St. Joseph didn't even do it. He just served. That's right. So he's totally the, the, against the devil. I mean, from that, being willing to serve in a quiet, strong way is exorcistic. It's taking the fight back to the Satan. Beautiful. Would you explain that a little bit more? Yeah. The yeah, term absolutely. you just used. Exorcistic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Satan's real. Mm -hmm. He's a dirt bag. He's also mm -hmm. miserable, by mm -hmm. the way. He wants everybody to be miserable. Mm -hmm. Our world is full of miserable people right mm -hmm. now. Even good Catholics mm -hmm. are miserable. Mm -hmm. The way that Satan can get in there. But he, he he's a dirt bag and he wants to lead us astray. And he hates men and women who want to be good priests, good religious. Mm -hmm. And so this is why we... And good it. married people. And good married people. Mm -hmm. I mean... And good sons and daughters. Anybody that wants to be good. And of course, this is his age, right? Uh -huh. where, I mean, where uh, we see this. Just, oh my gosh. So I live in San Francisco, you know? Uh -huh. I mean, with this... When, uh -huh. the, when the Texas abortion law came out, I mean, you, you had people who were Satanists upset because for them abortion is sacramental. I mean, it's, it's diabolical. Mm -hmm. and, and you see the reaction to something so sensible to try to protect human life. Mm. So basic matter of justice, principle of justice. And you see this with a breakup of the family. 
and the attempts of, of governments and as well as others to break up the family. And when you wipe out that binary image, that male and female, yes. you wipe out God's image. Yes. God created us male and female. Yes. In his image, he created us male and female. Yes. And when you wipe it out, it is satanic because you're getting rid of the image of God in the world. And so St. Joseph comes back in and he helps restore this, right? He restores, he helps restore real manhood and his love for the Blessed Mother, the way that he also revealed the love of God the Father to Christ in his human nature. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. Jesus Christ is true God, but he's also true man. He, and he has, you know, a, a, a fully divine nature and a fully human nature. And the way that he received the love of God the Father came through St. Joseph. Isn't that beautiful? That's unbelievable. I love St. Joseph. But I mean, for, that's I all of him. us, right? So what does a priest need to do? He needs to exhibit the love of God the Father in a world where manhood ceased to exist. Amen. And as womanhood ceased to exist, yes. and everything is this fluidity. No. To reclaim manhood, the Amen. real notion man. But the real notion, you know, not We want real of, men. Yes. We well, need them I as know. women. Well, gosh, we need them as priests. We, we need, need priests. We need, we need the whole thing. Father. Yes, sir. It's so obvious, I'm sure, to our audience that every time the two of us get together, it just goes <laughs> like this because you talk about me being intense. I think you also are intense. And together, that holy intensity Amen. for God, Amen. I like to say it's just the Holy Spirit sparking in every direction. Amen, sister. So I kind of think, Father, this interview, and I know that um, the people watching this are, are, are going to say, we want to see more of Father James Moore, and I agree because um, to me it's been very obvious ever since I first saw you, and I remember very specifically you sitting there also on that organ bench playing mm -hmm. benediction and me saying, he's got to be Mary's, and he's a Dominican priest. Amen. And going up and talking to you, and you agreed to the Dominican portion, mm -hmm. which really did kind of surprise me. I'm like, oh, this is going real well. And then the total consecration of Mary. What? And I'm like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll do that one too. <laughs> that too is written all over you. Amen. So Father, thank you for coming all the way from California to visit your sisters here. Of course, of course. Um, that friendship has always meant the world to us. Amen. Amen. Well, maybe should we close with a, Let's do. With a blessing? Maybe yes, a prayer and a blessing? Please. Excellent. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of our Dominican life and for the gift of our Dominican charism. We ask you to bless all those who are listening, especially through the intercession of St. Dominic and through the intercession of St. Joseph, Our Lady of the Rosary, and all the saints. And may Almighty God bless you all and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Sister. God bless you. You too.